would like to thank John Lowry and Lawrence Carlos very, very much for inviting me to this uh, exhibition. I'm very, very honored that I can be in the MoMA. And um, I think a couple of years ago, Larry uh, started contacting me about the, the show he invited me. And my first, um, my first response was something of disbelief. Um, and this really was not, maybe it was not just the fact that it was the MoMA uh, contacting me, but it was the fact that, uh, that um, Lawrence Carnish was uh, from the film department, and as we all know, an expert on Randy Randy Fosspeeder. And this was the last uh, corner of, that I would expect uh, to be appreciated of, because I never had any film, formal film training. Film was never a reference directly for myself in my work. Um, I was trained as a sculptor, and I always thought I do everything wrong from the, from the angle of filmmaking. So this was something I was really, really surprised about. Um, then when we started to, uh, and I was a bit worried, like, what is, well, how, how does he, did he really look well enough at the work? Because he did not really see that I, that this is something completely different. Then he, he developed this kind of proposal for how to deal with the museum uh, with this show, and he came up with the idea um, of not, basically not using the conventional spaces, but using the transition spaces. So the lobby, things like the lobby, staircases, whatever we could find in the museum, where we could uh, install the work. And I realized that he had, a, that this was a very, very clever idea, and that he must have understood the nature of the work pretty well. Because the works um, are also a kind, are kind of encounters in space, uh, they're not just films, they have, for me, the, the, the physical environments they, they occupy and they, re they react on um, are as important uh, as what is taking place within uh, the, the moving image. And uh, when I visited the MoMA for the first time, um, I was shocked first by the enormous amount of crowds uh, of, that are, are moving through, through the museum. I mean, I've never seen a place like that on, on Earth for contemporary art, where there's this one big stream uh, of, of crowds moving, moving through the whole building. And what I first thought um, could, be, could be a problem for installing my work, I later realized that this was actually something very special. Because all my work deals with groups of people with crowds, and um, uh, the, what, is, what seems to be so interesting to me that in fact with the one crowd could mirror the other crowd. So by looking at the work, you could you, you would be observing the work, relating to the work, but at the same time observing and um, uh, relating to the crowds you were yourself part in in the museum. So that this is an excellent kind of parallel and parallelity, which I often look for in, in when I install my work, but to this extreme I've never had that before encountered. During, so during the way we were trying to find locations and, and make decisions about the work, we at some point realized that some of the, the works that I made, which are more architecture, more complex, uh, with, uh, because they have more screens or more walls that where the screens were being, being installed in, could not be could not be shown, exhibited, and, and we kind of together decided that it was important to add one more conventional room to uh, don't leave out this aspect of the work. So I'm very happy there's also some more that's a combination of more silent parts, and more dynamic parts uh, in the museum way, and on different ways to look at the work and, uh, and, and see it. So um, that's really.